that day. That, that sense of belonging, that sense of mattering, was a big deal. 100,000 fifth through 12th graders. We surveyed 100,000 of these kids using um, what I'll introduce to you in a little bit, the Gallup student poll. And I have this hybrid job where I do a lot of stuff on strengths, and a lot of stuff on the hope, engagement, and well-being. And they kind of work very nicely together. But on the Gallup side of my job, um, we're launching something called the Gallup student poll. So our pilot was 100,000 people. I love saying that. Our pilot was 100,000 people. Um, and in that pilot, we learned that well-being was a big driver of academic success. In that pilot, we learned that well-being peaked at fifth grade, just like engagement. It went down. Now, I'll show you some slides later about this data. And what I want you to realize is that the, the students who dropped out, who were at the lowest point of engagement and well-being, are not even in the data set. Because everything was school-based. And this data still. So we're not accounting for the cases that had so much suffering, so much disengagement that they left. We're just accounting for the students who actually showed up on the day to take the survey. Okay? So well-being becomes a big player in this equation. And if you're suffering, and I'll talk about what that means later, but if you're suffering, and 5% of your students are suffering wherever you are, 5% of Americans are suffering, which is one of the lowest suffering rates across the world, but 5% of your students are suffering, they have about a 6 in 10 to an 8 in 10 chance of being actively disengaged from the college experience. Okay, so that's what we learn from high schoolers and middle schoolers, and it also generalizes to your students. A million American students in March, um, we have about a million American students signed up uh, to take the Gallup student poll, fifth grade through college. Um, and that's our second pilot. I love saying a million American students, second pilot. Yes, sir? Could you elaborate a little more on what it means? Yeah. Are you using that uh, to mean the absence of suffering? Um, let me get back to that, because I, I actually will kind of break it down for you, okay? But I'm, I'm trying to sneak up on that. Um, and I'll do that through a few questions. But it's a great, great question. Sorry if my slides are kind of high there. The big questions, okay? So if you want to get at hope, engagement, and well-being and not use a measure, here are three questions that you can use. So the first question is, what are your hopes and wishes for the future? And actually talking to students about their hopes and wishes for the future and helping them frame those hopes and wishes in such a way that they become actionable goals. Who makes you feel like you matter? My uh, friend Tom Raff um, worked in a homeless shelter and this was the question that he led a lot of his consultations with. So, Homeless guys, typically guys who come into the shelter and want to talk about sources, uh, resources. And Tom said, well, your number one resource is other people. He makes you feel like you matter. And once we can really understand how grandma is motivating a student and how best friend is motivating a student and how mentor is motivating a student, then we can tap into that motivation. And you'll see these questions. I, I see a lot of you writing. You'll see these questions three or four times. So you need not get all of them. The next question. Um, we've been using it for 50 years at Gallup. Pew uses it. Lots of other folks use it. It was developed on the Princeton campus by a guy named Hadley Cantrell. Some of you may know Hadley's previous work. Um, he was the guy who measured terror after Orson Welles did his little stunt and War of the Worlds. Um, so Hadley said, and, and Orson apparently did that right down the street from Princeton University. Hadley said, it just scared the hell out of people. Let's find out more. Um, then he switched his work over the years to people are hopeful, let's find out more. And then he did a 13 country study, and this was kind of the question he, he used to look at well-being among folks. And that question is, and, and we can play this game along, imagine a ladder standing before you, the top rung is 10, and the bottom rung is zero, on which step of the ladder do you stand today? Take a snapshot number between 0 and 10. I can say today I'm 7. Okay? Um, imagine uh, that same ladder five years from now. On which step of the ladder will you stand on in five years? Okay, take a snapshot. I can say my number today is enough. Okay? And that's a little bit higher than the national average for Americans. It's usually around 
um, six to seven, and then somewhere between eight to nine on the future. Now, these are three questions that are proxies for measuring hope, engagement, and well-being. Okay? And if you're thinking, oh, not my engagement, that's cool. All right? We're looking at an engagement that is all about satisfaction with and excitement for, enthusiasm for what you're doing right now in school. Okay? Now, I'm going to come back to these um, in different ways over the next few slides. <coughs> Maybe. Oh. Gosh, again, I'm so sorry about the top there. Basically what that says is hope in Americans um, and across the world. So we've asked that question. What are your hopes and wishes for the future? We've asked that question of 1,000 Americans and then 139,000 other folks across the world. And the data line up uh, very nicely across the world. These are the American data. Um, these categories were mentioned by 3% or more of the sample, okay? And so these are folks 15 up on up, and this is what Americans, these are their hopes and wishes for the future. Um, health, wealth, happiness. Healthy, happy, safe, close family. More of the same. Okay, more of the same. In that way that may represent a cognitive conservative approach, cognitively conservative approach, or, <coughs> in a Chris Peterson kind of way. I don't think Chris is here. Um, last night, I grabbed the juice and sat down with Chris, and he said, well, tell me, tell me about leaving KU and, and what that meant, because I was at the University of Kansas. And, and I, you know, made up some story, and, and uh, he goes, I could never do that. I love what I'm doing right now, and I'm scared to leave it. So it's both. It's that I love it, and I don't know what it, what it is on the other side, okay? So some people are talking about that. Good job. Across the world, this pops up. Across the world, good job. God, housing, peace. Is there anything not on there that you're curious about? Say again. Love. Love. Um, when we talk, love pops up, like when we, Chris mentioned this yesterday, when we ask leaders, when we ask followers what they want from leaders, um, love, hope, stability, and trust are the four things they mention. Love, hope, stability, and trust. So love is a big player in the world. I think they roll it in into peace and family, but love is not, it doesn't pop up in more than 3% of the responses. Yeah. It's Joe. interesting that God is lower down there. We hear so much today about spirituality on campus and students' interest in spirituality. Yeah. And you don't see God as a big... And this is the ranking, so I'm glad you asked that question. Health is number one, wealth number two, happiness. And those are pretty selfish. <coughs> I want to be healthy, I want to be wealthy, I want to be happy. Oh yeah, then, then comes my family. Then comes my family. And this is a clustering. Um, we, we try to identify unique clusters, but healthy, happy, safe, close. Close means proximity. Close to me, family. Um, those were a few different clusters, but they rank ordered right after one another, so I just smushed them together. Um, I don't think they're necessarily unique. Um, but yeah, we don't get to that social stuff until number four or five. Right. Peace is global peace? <coughs> Say again? Global peace, peace, peace is peace. Global? It could be. It could be in your Not city. of mind. No, it could be in your city. Um, this is American data, but we, we've asked a thousand Iraqis, what do you want? You, you can imagine peace is in there. Yes? What about uh, knowledge, learning, new opportunities? Yeah, no, less than 3% of the folks in America said that's what they want. Yeah, yeah. Sort of shocking, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, if you're wealthy, you can buy it um, from the peanut gallery here. Um, you know, we, this health, I'm, I'm excited that health was number one. Um, it's another one of those changing the light bulbs thing. Uh, we know